What's going on everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu Desktop 22.04 LTS, aka Long Term Support, from start to finish. For this video I'll be showing how to install it on a Windows machine being converted to Ubuntu Desktop. For my Debian video I'll show a Linux to Linux install that I will have out in the next few weeks. Anyhow, let's get started. So I just want to start off by going over the system requirements here and so this is directly from Ubuntu's help community section and so as you see here you're going to want a 2 gigahertz dual core processor 4 gigabytes of RAM 25 gigabytes of storage space 8.6 gigs for minimal 1024 by 768 screen resolution and then either a CD DVD drive or USB port for the installation media and then it goes on and explains a few other things here kind of more in depth but we don't need to go over that because this is really all we need here so to download Ubuntu you would just go to ubuntu.com and of course I will have all the links that I'm showing here down in the description below so it'll make it nice and easy for you so you go to Ubuntu's website you would click on download and then Ubuntu Desktop, you would go ahead and select the long-term support version. So in this case, 22.04. There is the slightly newer versions that you'll see to the right of it. However, these generally don't have a very long update support time frame. It can sometimes not necessarily be as stable as the long-term support versions. So my general rule of thumb is just stick with the LTS versions. Anyhow, I already downloaded it, so we're not going to go ahead and click this, but if I were to click here, it would start the download process. The other thing that we are going to utilize today is a utility called Rufus, which is incredibly powerful for creating USB boot media, and you can use it for many different operating systems. You can use it for Windows, you can use it for Linux operating systems. It is very, very powerful. Anyhow, if we scroll down here, we'll get down to the download section. And then I just go ahead and download the main latest version up here. However, I already have it. And so I have it on my desktop. It downloads just an executable, so there's nothing to actually install, which is really, really nice. It is a very lightweight, but as I said, powerful utility. And one thing also to note is that I have a 32 gigabyte USB 3.0 thumb drive plugged into this machine at the, at the moment, you will want at least an 8 gig thumb drive in order to actually install this version of Ubuntu. So to get started, what we just do is we'll go ahead and double click on Rufus. It does need admin rights in order to move forward, so we'll hit yes. You can go ahead and hit yes for this here, but obviously since we're going to be nuking this machine and putting Linux on, it really doesn't matter, but we'll hit yes anyhow. And so if a thumb drive is in fact plugged in, you'll go ahead and see it up here. If you have multiple thumb drives plugged in, you may have to click a drop down and it will go ahead and show you your options here. We'll go ahead and leave this section as is. And then what we're actually going to do is we are going to go ahead and click select. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the ISO image that downloaded. And so we'll hit open. And then Rufus, for the most part, automatically sets things to exactly what they need to be in order to work. It basically senses what the operating system is inside the ISO and tries to best select what is needed. And so for the most part, you can leave this stuff all as is. You generally shouldn't have to click on the Show Advanced Drive Property section here. And then you can just leave everything as is here. Volume Label, you can certainly change it to something other than this, but this is pretty self-explanatory here. And then so the only thing that next up to do is just go ahead and click start. Now before I do click start, as you'll see here, it's the formatting operation. This will destroy any data on the target. So key thing is whatever is on that thumb drive is going to get nuked. So if you've got anything important on it, back it up before you go ahead and move forward. So we'll go ahead and hit start. And if you see this ISO hybrid image detected, just go ahead and leave it as the recommended here and just click OK. And it's going to warn us one more time that it's going to nuke the data. So we hit OK. And then just go ahead and sit back and 
just be patient let it work its magic here you can also take this opportunity to go ahead and try out the amazing wacky cake recipe i have in the description down below it is a fantastic cake all right so it is now done so we'll go ahead and click close so one of the biggest things is actually trying to get the computer to boot from the thumb drive now now every manufacturer and model is slightly different it could be a number of buttons that you would have to potentially press while the computer is booting at essentially the post screen which is like what you would see the manufacturer name on the screen or it would explain what the model number is and all that good stuff as you first turn the computer on sometimes you get lucky and it actually says boot options in one of the corners or something of that sort it may say like press f2 or f9 or f10 or f12 or even the delete key sometimes it doesn't say anything at all but hitting one of those keys will do the trick the best thing that i recommend is just go ahead and google your exact manufacturer and model of computer to figure out what the boot order or boot options key is today i'm on a lenovo desktop so it is f12 to get it to go into the boot options so i'm going to go ahead and reboot this machine and we will get into the boot options and i'm just going to keep hitting the f12 key as this machine attempts to start coming back up here this the lenovo splash screen let's keep hitting f12 and here we are so I'm going to go ahead and toggle down to the USB hard disk drive, aka HDD here. Now, each thumb drive is going to be potentially named different depending on the manufacturer of the thumb drive. This was a relatively cheap thumb drive, so it's a basically generic brand. So anyhow, I'm going to hit enter here, and then we'll just go ahead and click enter, or you have a period of time to go ahead and select what you want here. If you don't hit anything, then it will automatically load into this here. So anyhow, this is what we want. So enter. We'll wait for it to work its magic here to load up. Of course, everything is dependent on the computer itself for speed as well as the thumb drive speed. So if you're using a USB 2.0 drive, it's going to take quite a bit of time to go ahead and load up. This USB 3.0 drive should be relatively fast. So at the first install selection screen, you can go ahead and select your language over here on the left we're not going to try ubuntu but you can essentially run it as a live disk so you don't actually have to install it but effectively if you shut it down then all your work is effectively gone so anyhow we're going to go ahead and install it which is also going to make it faster so we'll install ubuntu it's going to ask you for keyboard layout i'm going to go ahead and leave this all as is because that's fine we'll hit continue at this screen, much of this is optional. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as normal installation. However, if you want a very cut down version, you could select minimal installation. We'll download updates while installing Ubuntu so that it will be up to date or should be all the way up to date once it's fully installed. You can go ahead and select install third party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. We're going to go ahead and actually skip this here and we'll hit continue. Now in this case, it's basically stating that there is essentially Windows operating system installed on this machine already. What we're going to do is we are actually just going to go ahead and erase the disk and install Ubuntu so that it is the only operating system on this machine. There is an option that you could allow for a machine to dual boot and you would have to select every time you restart it or turn it on, you'd have to select which operating system you'd want it to boot into. We're not going to go over that today, so we're just going to do erase disk and install Ubuntu. Install now. And of course, this is going to go ahead and destroy all the data in that Windows environment, along with everything that's on the hard drive. So we'll hit continue. We'll go ahead and keep this as is here. That's fine. If this is off, you can go ahead and delete this out and type in a city near you. Continue. And in the theme of the wacky cake, we will go ahead and name this a wacky. Let's go ahead and call the computer cake. And then we'll stick with username wacky and we'll make cake the password. Because we 
can, even though it is a horrible password. I strongly recommend to leave require my password to log in, but you could certainly select login automatically, but this adds a layer of security here. Not that we've got much security with this pretty horrible password, but don't worry about use Active Directory, so we'll hit continue. If you want a little bit of entertainment, you can go ahead and expand this out and just watch as things are happening here, but just go ahead and sit back. Maybe check on the wacky cake that you've got baking right now. So once things are complete, then we'll go ahead and see this screen and then we'll just hit restart now. Sometimes it's also a good idea to go ahead and pull the USB thumb drive before you restart it here. In this case, it's also warning us. Hit enter. So now we should be at the login screen. So we'll go ahead and log into Wacky here with the old password of cake. Enter. It will load us right in. You can go ahead and connect into accounts here, but I'm not going to worry about that. So we're going to go ahead and click skip. We're going to go ahead and leave this as is, but as it mentions, you can always enable it later on. So we'll hit next. As much as I would like to help them, I'm going to go ahead and hit no. Please don't send information. Hit next. Location services is, of course, by default off. You can go ahead and turn it on. We'll go ahead and leave this off here. We'll hit next. Open software now and go ahead and start downloading more tools like this or even games like Zero AD and also Audacity, things like that. We're going to go ahead and click done. And we actually have this pop up here to install updates. So let's actually just expand this out and you can kind of see what's what it is looking to pull down. Lots of LibreOffice stuff and software updates. I'm a big proponent on keeping things up to date. So let's do install now. Let's see the details for entertainment. Computer is now up to date. We'll go ahead and hit OK for that. Anyhow, that is basically all there is to installing Ubuntu. You know, the big thing with it is just start diving in. If you haven't used it before, start dabbling. It comes with Firefox by default as your web browser, but of course you could go ahead and install many different browsers to your, of your liking. Basically an app store built into it here. LibreOffice, AKA it's a open source office product kind of in competition of Microsoft Office products. Email, file section, rhythm box, media player stuff. There's also a help section. If you got a thumb drive plugged in, in this case I left that Ubuntu thumb drive plugged in. And then there's the trash. And then of course there are show all applications down here and you can go ahead and look through things. You know, just feel free to poke around the best way to learn is just dive in and see what things do. And worst comes to worst, just repeat this video of nuke the operating system and rebuild and just keep learning. And you can also right click on the desktop and you can go ahead and change the background if you like. You know, we can choose something a little different than the floating jellyfish. You can choose a nice landscape. You can also right click and do display settings. If it doesn't automatically detect your resolution, you can change it here. You can do scaling, which may be easier on people with sight disabilities. We're going to go ahead and revert that. But yeah, lots of, lots of different things to try here. So anyhow, as I'd mentioned, that's all you have to do to get the basics going. Feel free to dabble around, as I'd mentioned. And it never hurts to Google things or even utilize ChatGBT this day and age to help answer questions on things you might want to accomplish within Ubuntu. If you found this video to be useful, please like it. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. In the coming weeks, I will be showing off more Linux videos. As I mentioned, I will have a how to install Debian video. And then I will be getting into videos showing off things like Docker and also utilizing things like Portainer to manage Docker. Anyhow, take it easy.